From a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. It's the Maryland Crabs. We're here on a beautiful 95 degree day in the middle of February. We are. And it's Thursday, so it must be time for a podcast. Oh, um, good and thing that explains these microphones, I imagine. Yeah, it would be. Speaking of which, make sure you're following us on all the right places Facebook, the Maryland Crabs. We've got a page and a group. Send us emails at info at the MarylandCrabs.com and go to our website. You can catch all the past episodes right there. You can leave comments and everything else. And most importantly, go to iTunes, go to Google Play, iHeartRadio. Uh, you're supposed to look into Spotify, aren't you? I'm supposed to do a lot of things, John. Yeah, well, you I don't can leave your wife all. out of this, okay? I do not do that. <laughs> I don't like to be told what to do. Yeah. Uh, but soon, hopefully, to be on Spotify as well. But go to any of those places. Make sure you find us. Give us a rating. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a you know, a, a review. A like great it, review. Well, yeah, a great review. Break out the thesaurus and everything. Uh, last week, we had a great conversation. Splendiferous. With, it is a splendiferous podcast. That's it. That's not a real word. S-P-L-E-N-D-I-F-E-R-O-U-S. <laughs> You're a spelling bee nerd. There it is. Uh, last week, we had a great conversation with Chase Cook from the Capitol. And who's this guy across from us right now? Um, he just showed up at the table. Yeah. And uh, this time, we're going to speak with, and we a repeat guest. You're, I think he's our first repeater, isn't he? You are. Uh, yes. This would be Gavin Buckley. Uh, and the last time we talked about him, he was the man about town with the uh, idea for the arts and everything else. And he was going to run for mayor, and he hadn't quite... He had filed, but he hadn't quite launched the campaign, and we promised to come back and talk to him, and uh, here we are. Now it's February. Now it's March. No, it's February. Well, it's February, but... It feels like June. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a beautiful February. day, and this, by the time you're listening to this, it's going to be huddled around the fire, most likely. But it's, yeah. it's absolutely spectacular. Um, but and we are at 49 West, by the way, so that explains all the clinking and clanking. That's right. I wish you could smell how good it smells here, though. It's not John, the clinking and clanking that you usually hear is John's dog, but yeah. the dog is not allowed in this restaurant. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's the kitchen, but it smells really good here. John's house is not smelled really good. Good lunch. Yeah, no, my weird smells. <laughs> but anyhow, Gavin, thank you very much for coming back. We appreciate it. And so I'm um, happy to be here. I had a great time on the show last time. Thank you so much. I know. Well, that was $20 well spent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what, what's, hap- what's happened since you've, uh, you've gone? Okay, last time, well, let's up- update us a little bit on the arts and stuff like that. Where do you stand? I mean, last time you were fighting in City Hall or historic preservation on the mural. Yep. And you had all sorts of ideas um, um, explain the more for, for people who did not hear the last episode. Why don't you explain the mural again? Cliff Gavin Gilsford. woke up one day last summer, two summers ago, and said, you know, what can I do to piss off the city? That's how I approached my marriage. And <laughs> Jeff Huntington came down and said, hey, I've got the perfect idea. If you need somebody to piss off the city, I am your man. And Gavin said, well, let's rent a bucket and we'll spray paint the front of Tsunami with a really cool mural. Uh, not quite, not quite not exactly that like that. <laughs> um, but no, I love they to tell the real story. You know, the real story is. Um, <laughs> you know, we that, know facts are just really uh, important. It's the city gave Ron Hollander a citation for some issues that he needed to fix on some of his buildings. His lawyer said to the city, "If you're going to give me a citation, what about everybody else? It's not fair. You just single out one person." City, in their wisdom, decided to issue, let's say, a hundred citations. And the day I got mine, it's like something when you've got to fix something on your house. You know you've got to do it, but it's the last thing you do because it's your house. So we knew we had to paint our building, but I stood out front of the building with a citation in my hand. I looked across the road at the state building. I drove past my favorite peeling paint building, the City Public Works building. And yeah, then, yeah, the uh, State House. Not the State and, House, but the... And then I just thought, well, I guess Jeff's available this weekend, and, and they're closing the street down for the first Sunday Arts Festival, So, and someone I knew could give me a free bucket truck. So the stars aligned, and it wasn't a conspiracy. It just happened in about four or five days, but it certainly turned into a big issue, and, and it's been a bit of a motivation for me to run because I, I feel like... We close our minds to new ideas. You can look around the country at, at cities that have transformed themselves through through art and food and things like that, and and, and they embrace 
a muralist like uh, Jeff Huntington. He is. Um, uh, he's. We're so lucky that he's chosen this town to be in, and so I think that instead of fighting against us and taking us to court next month, the city should be working with us. You know, there wasn't a process in place. Uh, uh, painting has never been considered an alteration, and so now uh, they're trying to say that, and so we don't believe that. We have one disagreement with the city. We're on. You know, we we love Annapolis. We love the historic district. We love the historic fabric of the town. Artists are respectful of that. No artists I know would graffiti. A, a, a beautiful historic building. Uh, Jeff's piece is an amazing piece, and we're lucky to have it. It really is, and that's that's still stuck in court at this point, right? I mean, it's the mural. If, if you haven't seen the mural, definitely drive down West Street and take a look at it. It is impressive. It yeah. uh, takes up the whole facade of Tsunami, which is three. It's like three storefronts, yeah. um, f- three or four feet by thirty, some um, by twenty. You know. it, it really impressive. It looks across West Street over into, I guess, sixty West, which is the big brick building. That's uh, big, ugly brick building. That's. Uh, <laughs> Architectural gem, e- e- equally non-historic, yeah. but it's, uh, it's 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 very impressive. And there's a court case that's pending on that um, yes. in the court of appeals. Yes, yeah. and that's when March. Yeah, it's April? been delayed. They keep delaying it and delaying it, which costs money every time. Sure. So I say the is beauty the of this is, um, I think it is. Yeah, the beauty of it is, um, I'm getting prosecuted with my taxpaying dollars. <laughs> And I get to defend myself with some other dollars. Well, it's, it's just a win-win. That's, 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 You're that's quite not. the businessman. <laughs> you got to rethink that whole business plan there. That's uh, well, that's funny. But what what else is new in the art enemy? And you're one of the go-to people. There's several that have worked together to bring uh, West Street alive with arts. Uh, we've got Dinner Under the Stars, which I'm assuming is happening again this summer. Yep, yep. It's going to be bigger um, this year. It's and just you're the guy one of the guys that puts everything together what's it what's what else is happening in the arts around annapolis that you can um we, we extended the christmas lights this year five blocks long which looks awesome which i think you know which was the catalyst for the dining under the stars we raised money uh, two christmases ago to light the first block with christmas lights then we repurposed them for dining under the stars which was a a huge hit for the for the street and and for the city i think it's it gives you an example of what happens if you build community if you build a town center for locals people come and so we have people lined up to get a seat in 100 degree heat just to sit outside on on a closed down you I, know, I, I i was one of them it was awesome <laughs> is that it that's was, not a formal organization that you have that's just a bunch of you gotten together to do this right a bunch yeah, it's of the west owners? street um uh, so west street association which is a resident and business association combined and it takes a few hard working volunteers and then also the arts district we uh, they kind of they run simultaneously so this is we, we've talked about I mean, we beat this to death obviously and people are going to roll their eyes right now but um, we talked about the business community we talked about uh, the ABA disappearing and this is what I was involved in the ABA for years and this is to me what I wanted the ABA to, to do and I loved it I loved the people involved in it and I, I loved everything but this is a great example of you know when government and I'm not anti-government, but I am anti-government involved in business. But when government's not involved, things happen. You know, yeah. these like if you look at what you guys have done up there, it is pretty amazing. It's just, I mean, I wish we could extend that down uh, down Main Street too, like for Midnight Madness. I mean, we have that Snowflake Alley, which is great. But what else you got? Because let, let's let's keep going with that. But it's just showing when you guys just take the bull by the horns and act on your own. This is what happens. Right. Yeah. What we do is we. First of all, our first rule is don't ask the city for money because that will slow you down. And, and the city have been great. They've worked with us on, on all the projects. Good. Permitting. And yeah, and so we've had no issues, and they, they've got out of the way, you know, and, 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 and been a great partner. And I've, so, I've said it before on the yeah. Fringe Festival. Yep. Uh, one of my favorite events, and it actually was the very first year when you did it, and it was stretched from Maryland Hall all the way yeah. down. And it was whatnot. ambitious plan. Then. But we've always tried to connect the first block of West Street with Maryland Hall. That's the whole idea of the arts you, you you really have, and I, I, the Fringe Fest was just one of my favorites, and I love that police, and I'll probably get them in trouble, but kind of look the other Good way. Good job. Piss off the cops, um, John. You know, you'll, you'll see people walking in the street with a glass of beer or with a cocktail. Not from uh, one of my restaurants. No, no, not, not yeah, there, no. no, no not no, Javins, no, no, John. No, but, I mean, the, uh, you know, but peop- the police would see that. I mean, Dinner Under the Stars, you can drink out in the street. I mean, there's, a, there's obviously the some sort of a permit yeah, for yeah. that. But it was really, really very cool to see that and to see kids as little as, you know, mid-calf 
Yep. To, you know, grannies and walkers just enjoying. And I ran into the car. <laughs> what a bizarre measurement system. Mid-calf. <laughs> yeah, mid-calf to grannies and walkers. But I ran into the car that was spray-painted uh, two years ago. All right. He lives in town. Right. And I was like, I know this car. Actually, yeah. I helped paint this car. Awesome. And he's like, really? And I pull out my phone. And he's like, oh, he says, can you send me these? Because I don't know how the hell he got it. But it was uh, pretty funny. But, I mean, we've got Chocolate Fest, Chocolate Binge Festival. That Huge. That was our most successful event. We, we raised... Um, $30,000 in sponsorship for that um, because it was for Christmas lights and for the festival. We generated, you know, probably five to $10,000 on the day of, of just people donating to the Arts District. And then all the vendors that came to that event, they all sold out, you know. So it was a huge... Um, and then at the end of it, we had a guy dressed as Willy Wonka. We got the mayor to pull the lever and Great. the lights. We lights lit up five on. blocks of West Street. And then this guy dressed as Willy Wonka sung the Imagination song. So it was a beautiful moment. It was really great. That's, that's what when you say you raised like $30,000 or so, and that, that gets put back into the arts program or the vitalization yeah. every of vitality we, of West Street? Yeah, every dollar we, we don't pay any. There's no offices. There's nothing. Every dollar we make, every dollar we, we raise, we put back into the arts district. We put it back into chickens or banners or, 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 Advertising or lights. Advertising lights. Or, or, no, you know, and or, or we pay artists with it. We pay musicians to, at our different events, as so they should it be. Always paid. gets um, as always gets put back into the community, and um, and that, and a lot of you know volunteerism, and that's been the strength of West Street. We've we've always believed in synergy. We've always worked together with. We have, haven't felt threatened by another restaurant or bar coming. We've felt like we could help them, you know, and that been about diversity too. As long as the food and concepts are diverse and different, um, and the arts are different, we've always tr- tried to strive for. That, you, know. you guys have a good model going right now that I'd like to see kind of adopted by like Maryland Ave and West Annapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Main Street gets their own attention, but I mean, these are areas that I think traditionally have been uh, underserved uh, by when it comes to, or not underserved, but but uh, undervisited when it comes to locals. But mm-hmm. I mean, what you guys have been doing over the last three years is pretty amazing. So I mean, I, I, I would hope that those areas kind of take note of that. I, I did a presentation on Maryland Ave the other day, and I've got some great ideas for Maryland they're, they're, Ave. I've talked to the brand vendors over there. Maryland yeah. Ave is fantastic. But I, I think that they have their own set of problems that they're put they're tucked aside, and I've heard the people over there, the business owners, they've all kind of expressed a sort of not resentment, but they feel like they're ignored by the city, ignored by residents, and they have their own set of, of issues. But they also have a beautiful setting over there that would just be yeah. really conducive to what you guys are doing over yeah. on May, on West Street. I mean, Maryland Avenue is also the gateway to the Naval Academy too. When you get it, yeah. when you get off of King George or Prince George or whatever street that is down there, because in the Gate One, I mean, you know, you've got the pedestrian gate straight at the end. They of did a St. Patrick's Day thing one year, didn't they? Or they had some sort of festival they closed they the street down. They a couple of defining festivals. I gave 10 big ideas to, yeah. the, to the street the other day, and I think that we can turn Maryland Ave around and get people to the street. One of the ideas I have is a thing called the Crosstown Flyer. It goes from Gate 3 of the Academy. It goes to Maryland Ave. It goes to St. John. Then it goes to West Street, and this is the one that's going to lose me the election. It goes up and down Main Street in a dedicated um, bike and trolley lane. So you have to have... For it to be a flyer, you have to have dedicated lanes or a, a, some portion of the route has to be dedicated just for a trolley, a soft wheel trolley, and some portion has to... And then you can double it up as a bike lane. I, if, if I become mayor, there's going to be city bike things all over the city. You can, like you see in D.C. and Baltimore, you can go and put a credit card in and use a bike and pick one up in Eastport I love and those ride things. it to Western Annapolis. I saw those down in like D.C. They're, they're amazing. That, what's so, it called? It's called... Uh, yeah, but you, but, but, oh, well, yeah. I, I want to get, jump back into the, into yeah, the yeah, arts thing real quick. And I, I had a meeting the other week with Ben Eisenberg. Yes. From Symmetry. Yes. And he was telling me some stuff. Can you can you let, let any of that cat out of the bag yet? Or? I'm about the... Festival, the yeah, about, yeah, about yeah. arts festival. Yeah, and no, well, great. He's trying to do a four or five five day event, six day event. That I mean, for me, connecting us to the stadium, um, connecting us to Maryland Hall is so important. And so um, he's got some cool kids that work for him. So I think he'll he'll bring some great flavor to that event. You know, and, and this then, is in early early June, I believe. Yeah, We're, I haven't got all the details. So yeah, yeah. I, I, and what he he told me they're looking to do is to start off. It'll be an arts week mm-hmm. in Annapolis, yeah. and they're looking to kick it off with First Sunday Arts, which yep. is just a wonderful first Sunday of every month. Yep. Gets underway in May? Um, yeah, yeah, May is the first one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the first Sunday of every month, it's noon to 6 o'clock. Vendors just line the street. The first, I would say the first block of West Street, but it is now extended down. Which makes it great. Beyond the lows, which is really nice. Um, and it's going to kick off with that. There's going to be two or three events throughout the week that will be smaller. And then it will wrap up at the end with the uh, 
Art and Wine Festival, which will be at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Yeah. So it'll be an entire week of this. And this is very much a similar throwback to what Jimmy Davies and I talked about probably three or four years ago at the film festival. Yeah. said he would love to have like an arts month yeah. where you know, you've got the Fringe Festival and you've got the Film Festival and you've got all of these things arts and, and Annapolis gets on the book worldwide yep. for like a, a big arts destination huh. yep. um, but I think that's a really good step and I mean Ben is, and his team are, at Symmetry are real good he's worked with the CBB or the Visit Annapolis they don't yep. like to be called the CBB anymore and I think that's really exciting I think to see where that's going to go and it'll be a new big draw for the city well the quarter everything's going to be events I mean uh, events based marketing is, is right. for we're not you, you're, you have to go out of your way to get to Annapolis it's a day trip especially if you're in D.C. or Baltimore I mean I grew up in Bethesda and we never came to Annapolis um, because it was it was a hard trip so if you, you have to have a very compelling reason to come here but um, I believe we should be the best side trip you can do from Washington D.C. the best side trip you can do from Baltimore and we need to make it don't stop there and go to Philadelphia too that's only two hours away I mean seriously I, I yeah. mean I go up to Philadelphia for a right. cheesesteak yep I, I say people they haven't been pips, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Pips. They're not that good. Sorry, Ryan. They're, they're, they're awesome. They're the they're, best in town. They're, they are. You Philadelphia But they're snot. not. They're just something that's missing. And I think it's because they don't have half a cow sitting Ryan, the, I love your cheese sticks. For... Don't spit in mine. You spit in his, and you're well within your rights to do so. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> Anywho. But... Well, um, I say this about the side trips. You should want to come from Washington, D.C., get on a paddle board at Spar Creek, paddle up to Pusses, and, and have a painkiller. That should be a thing. We should be a water sports destination. We should be fighting to make um, Spar Creek pristine. and Weems Now, we're talking like, like sports out on the water. We're not talking any yeah. kind of Trump things going on here. No, though, no, no. My, my joke is I am... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that, was, that was the time lag between the two. I'm not afraid of a shower. No. Um, so, um, he, um, but but definitely like Spa Creek should be a great place to go, you know. And so I have mooring in Spa Creek, and I think I made this joke last time. Um, that uh, and I'm at the mooring. My kids will be swimming out there, and I'll be swimming out there. And then uh, people will be standing on the shore, going, "Don't get in that water," you know. And I say, "I'm from Australia. Flesh-eating sharks or flesh-eating bacteria? Same <laughs> same statistical risk, you know." But but we should fight for it to make it clean. And the cities that are way worse uh, have, have start from a way worse base than we have, and they turn their rivers and their waterways around. We should be. I say, the more of us had to get in the water, the more of us will take care of the water. You know, probably need to take a quick break here. Let me get a refill on my yeah, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I said something wrong. You could clear it at me. No. We have to have a signal where you just yeah. where you don't look at me like my dad. I just rolled in drunk from curfew. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> folks, we're going to take our first break now so that John can clear curve his attitude a little bit. And we'll come back, and I want to talk about the differences between uh, the candidates because we've spoken with you, we've spoken with uh, John Astle, and we've spoken with uh, Mike Panelides. So I think everyone has at least got the beginnings of their campaigns and their platforms. So let's get into that a little bit. I'll get my HT. Gavin can change his hat from arts arts director to politician to politician all right right back great when a ring from the united states naval academy comes into zachary's for a center stone it always makes us wonder where's this one going where's this one been a nuclear sub in the north atlantic a carrier deck in the south pacific the moon 52 astronauts are Academy graduates from Iwo Jima to Okinawa, Corregidor to the Coral Sea, Midway to the Persian Gulf, Congress to the White House. These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Very few things in life are so precious and so irreplaceable that we all must do our part to protect them. The Chesapeake Bay is one of those things. You can do your part by contributing to the Chesapeake Bay and Endangered Species Fund. It's that little line item you'll see at the very end of your Maryland tax return. Any amount you give makes a difference, and it's tax deductible. I'm Peter Franchot, Maryland Comptroller. Our bay and rivers thank you. Learn more about the Chesapeake Bay Trust at cbtrust.org. And we're back. John's got his iced tea. Gavin's got his coffee, and I ain't got nothing. And Gavin put a new hat on. 
We got a new hat. Yep, switched hats, actually. <laughs> so now uh, we are in talking to candidate Gavin. Yes. Hi, candidate Gavin. Good day. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, we had, had some talks with, uh, so we talked to Senator Astle a couple weeks ago, and then, or about a month ago, and then a couple weeks ago, we talked to Mike Panelini. Well, we mayor, talked to course. him as the mayor, and we we're going to be talking with him. As a candidate. As a candidate, shortly. Uh, right. And we'll probably be talking to Gavin again as we get closer to as the, get the closer. election, and we're going to talk to everybody again, and we have some other politicos who are coming in who are running for this and that, and we're going to have them on. So what we... And we're going to do a debate. Yeah, we're going to do a bait. Just not just us next time. We're just you and I argue. But so <laughs> when we talk to uh, to Mike Panelides uh, and uh, as mayor, you know, he just kind of went through everything you see in the papers. That, you know, a lot of the things that that he you know, accomplished were, uh, you know, in all fairness, were laid out by by previous administrations. As happens, there's nothing unusual with that. But you know, it's that's easy to kind of say, okay, this is this happened under our administration. On the other hand, you have Senator Astle who's saying, well, wait a minute, you know, that the infrastructure of the of the town is is crumbling. crumbling. Um, he where, cited Main Street, right? With the, you know, with the big it's... ruts that are going down the middle, etc. So we have, uh, and and frankly, uh, you know, I think he said this in the interview. So we're not telling tales out of school so much as his biggest uh, obstacle to overcome is going to be the fact that he's perceived as an establishment candidate. That is to say, he's been in office since like 1900. You know, so he's been there for a long time. That comes with some a lot of strengths because you know how the system works. You know how government works. Comes with a lot of weaknesses because uh, you're connected to people that are perceived as you know pulling strings or making decisions it's you know the whole swamp that president trump talks about and uh, the current mayor has uh, has a lot of issues in that he's got a couple of large things on his plate crystal spring is one that can't get kicked down the road um, very much longer crime uh, crime is, a, is certainly an issue and he's taken and, and a, a lot of serious vacancies in his administration right so uh my concern as a non-resident uh, i'm a pseudo resident in that i live south of the city but you know my concern as I look and see that, that Kenya, right? <laughs> Kenya, what? But you can see that uh, that most of the attention and effort from the mayor and the the, the council goes to Ward One issues and downtown issues. Um, you seem to be very business oriented, which we have not had in a candidate in a long time. As a matter of fact, some of the mayors that we've had have been strictly uh, have been c- considered anti business for the most part. And I, I would certainly put Mayor Moyer into that category. I mean, that's again painting with a broad brush. I'd probably put Mayor Cohen in that. Not solid but leaning toward that. Uh, he knew he knew where his bread was buttered. Obviously, he just didn't butter it enough before. Well, yeah, I guess. But I mean, so but so we have in you a candidate. I don't think we've seen before is that someone who is business oriented and who who looks at the whole city as saying, you know, I want to revitalize the city as a as a destination. You know, you're looking at this as a businessman. No, I'm, I'm not. T- but whereas the other two candidates tend to be more traditional. Yeah, I think that you know nothing happens without economic vitality. You know, you have to have cash flow. So we have to make the city work, and we have to make the city... My big thing is we have to broaden the base of people that are attracted here. So we need, um, well, I always say younger people, but not just younger people, but younger people would be a great start, that, uh, that want to live here and want to start businesses here and are able to live here. So we have to structure it so we get mixed-income housing. We get things that we make it dynamic enough that, the, that they think this is a good place to start a business. If you... You don't have to look very far. Austin's, Boulder's, Charleston's, Asheville's, Burlington's. These cities um, that are driven culturally, that have come up with new ideas, that have you know events that are, are oriented to the locals, but have big picture things, that they make your town uh, exciting. You know? And then we, we need to make the town exciting and we need to um, attract more di- different businesses. I think we should be striving to be a gastronomic destination. We should be striving to be an arts destination. That's, uh, you know, it's funny. I want to... A town that I love, and I will say that I'm not. I, I appreciate the arts, but I'm not necessarily an arts. You are not guy. a culture vulture. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not ooing and eyeing over anything, but I certainly appreciate it. But Asheville, North Carolina, uh, phenomenal food, phenomenal arts. They've, they've got a thing. They had a burnt out building, very similar to what we had on Main Street, and they boarded it up and painted it with chalk paint. And every day they have somebody from the homeless shelter come down, wipe it down. And they get paid and replenish the chalk. And it's got one of those sayings, you know, if I was, you know, king of the world, I would do blank. And you could fill in whatever it was. Or before I die, I want to, 
which they have at a lot of festivals. And I thought that was just so awesome. Here, while this business is going through whatever they're going through to get repermitted to build, the city has taken it upon themselves to make it not quite an eyesore. You know what's funny that you just mentioned as you rattled off those cities, Gavin, is uh, it just struck me. Those are all liberal cities. They all can be considered liberal cities. And that's interesting to me that if you look at... I'm just talking out loud here. If you look at that liberal cities would be somewhat antithetical to businesses because business pro-business positions are generally a conservative or at least a Republican value. Yet the cities that have reinvented themselves in the way that you said, and, and arguably those are all relatively new inventions over the last 10 years, those are all without exception liberal cities. I wonder why that is. I mean, we're, we're not a liberal city. I always said, we talked about this last time, we're a conservative city in so much as residents don't want things to change. They dislike the city as way, the way it is. But when you talking about your traditional liberal progressive cities i don't know if we would fall into that um but but it's it's strange to me that all those cities that reinvented themselves are fairly liberal fairly to exceedingly liberal places i can't think of any conservative towns that do that i don't know why that is i mean i feel like we have all the pieces to be as good as any of those cities or better with our own flavor but we just need to be pushed in that direction you know and so um I guess you could say they're liberal cities. But what, what's great about those cities is the people that are from them will die for their city. You know, we, um, we have a city where we love our city, but people don't go the extra yard for it because they don't feel the love back sometimes. And I think that if you build community, you build a great community, people will give more, they'll volunteer more, they'll do more, they'll put up with more, whatever it is. But you have to build that community to make your city great. I think sometimes when you live in a city, and you, it's sort of like when you live in your house and you have a, a light bulb out, that you stop noticing it after a while. So you don't see what's wrong, you don't see the, what you need to fix. But uh, I'm on Reddit, John's on Reddit. It's a, it's a great place on, online. I think it's the number 10 uh, website, most visited in the country. So they, uh, you get people who have questions from outside the city all the time, where they say, hey, I'm, I'm moving to Annapolis where should I live? That was today. Yep. I wanted, and there was one uh, the other one day looking saying, for brew pubs. Yeah, one looking for brew pubs. Uh, one I think go someplace else. <laughs> <Do a West>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one was looking for, uh, they're saying, hey, we're making day trips. What should we do? And it was funny. It was the people, because Reddit is a pretty helpful community, and people were giving them all these suggestions of things to do. And a lot of the things I hadn't thought about, and I lived here. We did, John always talks about being a tourist in your own town and what have you. But, I mean, that's kind of what I hear from you is I don't hear that from the other traditional candidates is, is is, you know, I'd say your strengths would be, and I, I think even your opponents would have said that off mic, but saying he's an ideas guy. He's got, you know, he's got these broad ideas and he's got these uh, specific ideas, rather, uh, as to the arts and how to move business, you know. But they think that that can conflict with the day-to-day running of the city. I mean, do you feel that sometimes would you categorize yourself as like, say, hey, I'm a dreamer, but, but yeah. can, you, can, can you put pencil to paper and, and make the things you say happen? You've well, already demonstrated you can on West Street. Could you do that in an administrative way? My, my first ever business was a coffee shop in the town. It was before there was a Starbucks in Washington, D.C. or a Starbucks in Baltimore. And uh, it was behind Middleton's Tavern. It was called The Moon. And my wife bought me a card and we had this um, saying put on the wall and it's, and it's a, um, a Yes, I am a dreamer. Uh, for a dreamer makes his way by moonlight and sees the dawn before the rest of the world. And I've forgotten who said that. <laughs> but, but, um, Gavin said that. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Gavin's wife said that. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, I think that, you know, what's what I love about the town is, you know, we have, there's so much more that we can do, you know. So I think that that's what's great about doing a, our businesses on West Street. When we came here, no one really cared about West Street, so we could do different things out there. And we've always tried to do businesses that are not, uh, we haven't tried to do Irish bars or sports bars because they're already here, you know. We've done businesses for locals. There, there is, I, I, I want to point out, there's not a darn t-shirt shop on West Street. We need more of those. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't buy a t-shirt on West Street, I don't think. Maybe at the Visitor Center. Perhaps. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, we've got a variety of businesses here. And one, one of the, I, I, just, I don't want to say a criticism, but one of the things I might say to you is that we've had a businessman run for mayor as an independent and Chris Fox. And that was against Mayor Cohen. And he, he was an independent, so he's sort of a spoiler to a degree. And he was running on, because he was pissed off. Well, pretty much with with the hassle of how he how he did it, you're different from that. I mean, okay, you might you might be pissed off on that, but okay, here's you've been in town for twenty 
Yeah, no, 20, nearly 25 years. Nearly 25 years. Okay, yeah. and a business owner for nearly all of them. Yep. yep. Uh, the businesses are growing every time you turn turn your head. There's another, you know, Buckley Danik right. venture opening up. Right. Um, and you've been involved in the community. It's not just you've not been isolated into Tsunami Metropolitan Lemongrass. And, you know, here he is just working within the confines of that. Uh, and I think that may be something that we're looking at. You're a resident of Ward 1? Yes. Okay. Yep. So you've got, you know, you've got your finger on the pulse of Ward 1, which is an important thing to consider going into into the election. I mean, I don't know that they're necessarily the ones that are going to be responsible for electing the next mayor. They traditionally have been. But they, but they traditionally have been. Uh, where, where, what, is, what is your platform now? I mean, I know the last time we talked, you were sort of putting it all together. And uh, I know you've been out walking the streets. I've been doing and I'll put that knocking on the doors. I guess I shouldn't say walking the streets. We got rid of that problem about a decade ago. Okay. We're not bringing that back. West Street, red light district to arts district. <laughs> you don't have to turn on that red light. Yeah. Walk that street for money. He don't care if it's wrong or right. So what is, so, so you're starting to solidify your, your platform. Yeah. Your website's about to go up. Twitter's about to, you're about to launch all those things right now. You've got now, a campaign manager out of Frederick who um, as a young kid who was, uh, you know, got him excited by a bar and got got in the game from that but but I, you look at Frederick. Frederick has turned around as yes, a city have. that uh, we, we called Fredneck is now a, a food destination. It's now an arts destination. So there are some kick-ass turn, restaurants yeah. up there, man. So if you See, can turn I, a town like that around, well, surely we have so much more going for that's us. That's so bizarre to me because I grew up in Montgomery County in the seventies and eighties, and I think we talked about this last time as well. Is that we did call it Fredneck, and it was yeah. it was if you're going north, you had to go through Frederick like, for a minute, and it was uh, it was incredibly you know it was rustic. It was we went from like the metropolitan area of dc within 20 minutes you were going through farmlands and people wearing flannel and like now it's amazing the it's it's nothing short of spectacular in probably 15 years the uh, sort of renaissance that they've gone through not just with the restaurants and the businesses but they've become a, a firm bedroom community um they've become uh that's not just uh, like i think montgomery village and germantown in, in montgomery county has been a compromise for people who want to live in bethesda and rockville and but it's in chevy chase but they can't afford it so so they have to live in those areas so they can afford it. Whereas Frederick's not that. Frederick is a destination where people, it's small town living in a bedroom community of a major metropolitan area. And that, that makes me think, why can't we have that? I mean, we, we have a head start, too. They started from zero. We've got so much more than those places. and I think We get the water. They, have, they still have cornfields. It's great. Um, we live in a great place. You know, it's like a holiday resort here. I think we're, very, we're so lucky. I feel so lucky to have, have landed here. But I just think there's a lot more that we could do, you know. So, so what's the impediment to that? So my, I think, um, you know, we have to, um, we just need some new ideas. We need some new ideas downtown. And so there's a, probably a handful of people that don't want any change. Their idea of, the only idea of good change is no change. And I think that you have to evolve as a city. You have to reinvent yourselves every now and then. Of course, the historic district is, is a priority. We have to make sure that we preserve all the fabric and scale that we have. That's That's got to be um, a, a number number one priority but that stuff should just be a backdrop for a bunch of cool stuff you know and so i think we made a lot of stuff happen out on west street where we had none of those advantages and uh, and, and i say there are less vacancies on on west street now than there are on main street i have a lot of ideas to revitalize main street and downtown i have a lot of ideas to connect our neighborhoods but the base of my platform is if we had built a downtown for locals we would have better shopping and better restaurants and tourists would still come because tourists want to go where locals go they want to do what locals do we don't have a trace of a crabber downtown we don't have a trace of an oysterman so you look in the new england towns you can feel that that stuff has happened in these towns but our town i don't know what we did to it but you it's like a bad version of ocean city or something but that's what know, kills yeah. me is it is that we are in the heart of the chesapeake bay here this is i mean yeah. annapolis is the capital of maryland but it's the capital of the chesapeake bay we don't have any crab houses in town yeah. No, we don't. I mean, and Buddy's, I'm sorry, Buddy's isn't, no. no offense to Mr. Blounder, but that's not a real crab house. If someone comes in, they said, where do we go for crabs? It's embarrassing. We have we don't have a single crab house in town. I don't even think Cantler's is yeah. in town. And that, but I mean, Mike's, should, Mike's and Cantler's. Cantler's is in the county. Both are in the county. Yeah, my, and my, Phillips was here. Those were, that wasn't real. Those weren't real crabs. That was like Indonesian right. crab. That's screw Phillips. One of my fixes would be, for the market house, would be an end user like, like um, Annapolis Seafood. Because at least it would be something real, something like seafood you know they, like yeah. the pike's market that, 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 you know? that they tried that i think ellen yeah. i think that was in one of ellen moyer's visions to bring 
them. Yeah, but there's a lot of. F- but in all honesty, there was a lot of flailing about at that point where they were trying to yeah. get something in there, anything in there, because I think they were under pressure from the governor's office. That right. was a rumor, who was who was tired of reading the local paper and seeing this mess go on under right. his nose. Um, but I mean, I, I kind of like that idea because that is one of my largest laments in this town is that if we want crabs to get crabs, we have to go to Mike's over on Riva, which are excellent, uh, but it's well outside the city. I mean, that that's uh, you know what, that's like a ten mile drive. It'd be nice if you could get on a, a, a water taxi or a ferry and, and go to a place and get crabs from this from the the heart of the city that we're supposed to be famous for crabs. Yeah, to put it into John's terms, it's like going to Philly and not having a single place that says serves a cheesesteak in town. Cheese steak, yeah. that, that's where we are with this. Well, that, you, talk, you talk about not doing things that the locals do, and I, I know that the schooner woodwind does a pretty good job of that. And they say, hey, you know, this is where the boaters hang out at the boatyard. Here's a coupon. Go have a, a, a dark and stormy or whatever right, it is. Right. But I think that when I go traveling, one of the first things I do is I'll get off if I'm on a cruise or if I fly in, I'll, I'll get a cabbie. Yeah. And I'll say, okay, I, what, what, give me four hours. What's it going to cost me for four hours? I mean, usually it's an island or, or something like that and, or a guide. And just take me around. I don't, I don't want – and on your left is the Vatican and on your right is – you know, I, I mean, no, take me around. Take me to someplace cool. And you go see the – Vatican's pretty cool in defense. It's, it is if you're a Catholic. You know, if you're into that whole pope thing. But you know. <laughs> well, we're not hanging out. I mean, that's, that's – yeah, no, but I, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, it's it's what do you do when you come here? I mean, we've got a few signs, which I, I'll, I'll give credit to Mayor Panelides for getting that grant. Yeah, they look cause they look great. They're yeah. looking very good around town. I, I walked I walked here today, so I saw a bunch of them up at Duke of Gloucester Street and and whatnot on how to directional signing, which happens. But yeah, we need something to make it a destination. Where where do the locals go? Where do locals? I've go? got an idea. It's called the Fourth Street Ferry, and it just runs um, on Saturday and Sunday from the Sailing Hall of Fame location to 4th Street because I believe like Davis is in the boatyard they're real locals kind of bars on the back back side on the back creek side so um so you could just that Fourth Street corridor would connect you to Back Creek, connect you to Spa Creek, and that should be. We should do something with that. Would it go across it. Spa Creek, or would it go around back to the Davis Society? We we'll just go across back and forwards, you know, on the hour, you know. So I can ask you that, that just that that when you talk about the locals, yeah. having like in your transit it's, it's system, free. it's free, it's yeah. free. But but having a transit system that that is boat oriented, like so you had something coming to Back Creek, like all the way back to uh, like yeah. off Edgewood. So if you're local. And you don't want to deal with the downtown parking. That you can actually just like catching a bus. You the, catch wa- the, the water boat. taxi does that. The water taxi goes yeah. all the way up Back Creek. The schedule's not the most convenient. I've yeah. taken it into town a couple of times when I know I'm going to get tanked up, uh, right. provided that I don't stay out too late because it doesn't run that late. It right. charges now, so. um, and 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 it's it, it is expensive, but it's 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 worth it. I mean, and the other thing that you need is, a boat version of Uber. Do you know Do you know what else that they used to offer? and They don't do it anymore. But Watergate Apartments, free water taxi used to come with the rent. Oh wow, that's incredible. And that was, uh, and I don't know whether they still do it, but it's, uh, I mean, that was, that was tremendous. You know, you get out of your apartment. I never lived there, but then you get out of your apartment, go down to the dock, and off you go. All right, so we've had, and you, you got tons of ideas, and, and all of them are, pr- are pretty original. So being that we live in a conservative town, and again, that is, that, that's people don't like change, and they just, they shy away from that. Let's, let's study this to death. I mean, how many downtown studies have we had? How do you make, how do you actuate these ideas? How do you make them happen? Well, I think I have the ability to get people around the table and, and have get people to talk to one another because I don't think that our ideas are that far apart. So I think if you get... I think people appreciate a good idea. I mean, I, I would say, you know, I've got decent support at Ward 1. They might disagree with some things on the mural. Uh, I go to Eastport and I talk to the community associations there and I feel like I've got good support on those things. I think people just want good ideas, you know. I don't think they're going to stop them happening. I think we have to take a look at our city permit process and we have to, you know, change the culture. I think that we um, have the worst reputation on that front. So one of the ideas I have is um, that we put the permit office on Main Street um, and put the conference table right in the window and then put a big 100-day sign in the, in the window with a countdown so that when you're looking in the window and you know someone's sitting there waiting for a permit, you can see how many days they've been waiting for. <laughs> wow. And, and then you can see them with their head in their hands when they've been told, <laughs> you know, no or something. But I think Note people to have self, to realize... Open up a Kleenex <laughs> store. <laughs> You know? <laughs> We're all in the service business, and I think that you know, if you change the culture, if you build um, um, a, a good teamwork in in, in your uh, departments, and, um, and and you help make people become part of the solution, not part of the problem, you know, then you can you can move that around. But we we have to do something to change our reputation. They're, they're streamlining things in the county, but I, I feel like. 
it hasn't happened here yet. Well, I think one of the things that we talked about was with Senator Astle was, you know, he's a take charge kind of guy. He's, he's ex-military and, and uh, you know, for him, it's all chain of command. And one thing we talked about is that no matter what administration comes along, whether it be the Moyer, the Cohen, uh, the Panelides, that the problem you have is that the bureaucrats, and, and I'm not saying that's pejorative, I, I mean the people that, uh, that are not elective officials who are in these positions, they don't change. And sometimes there's a culture in there of culture of no or a culture of, you know, manana. Uh, so how do you change that? And, and actually, Senator Astle had a great point saying, well, I believe in you know, these meetings once a week where you have all your department heads and you ask the tough questions. Now, having been in that work for someone like that before, I'll tell you, although it's ulcer-inducing when you're one of those managers, it does work. Uh, so, I mean, how do you change a bureaucracy? Uh, that, that, and we have a pretty thick layer of bureaucracy here in town as a businessman, as you know. Oh, I think that's a great idea, John's. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll do, I don't think I'll you do that. The, I don't think you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> what else does John say? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you, we've talked to Gavin a little bit about the arts early on in the program. Right now, we've hit a bit about his campaign. We want to talk a little bit more about this. Rumor has it that you had an announcement for us, so I want to uh, hold off on that. We're just going to – we'll get to that in a minute. We're here at 49 West. I want to thank Brian Callahan very much for his hospitality again. This is a wonderful back room, wonderful place to eat and drink. And listen to jazz, I would almost say close to seven days a week. I think five days a week. He's got great jazz in this back room. So uh, thank you very much for that. And when we get back, I want to ask Gavin one question. Assuming that you've won the election, somehow we got a $500 million budget. And I want to find out what he does to spend it. And we'll be right back. Don't miss AAMC's Denim and Diamonds Bash, an evening to remember with a cocktail buffet, silent auction, and dancing, all to support expanding mental health at AAMC. We need your support to help us double our county's inventory of mental health beds, allowing for the care of 900 patients a year right here in Anne Arundel County. Tickets available at aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Special thanks to our presenting sponsors, the Chesapeake Bayhawks, M&T Bank, and our platinum sponsors, Aerotech, AAMC Medical Staff, BB&T, Comcast, Homestead Gardens, Ken's Creative Kitchen, Tech Systems, What's Up Media, and 1031 WRNR. If you don't like huge draft beer selections, don't go to Union Jacks. If you're not looking for an incredible menu and dozens of screens to catch your favorite teams, I repeat, do not go to Union Jacks. Not into darts and pool? Good. Live music not your thing? Perfect. Bottom line, if you are not interested in the best dining and bar experience in Annapolis, avoid Union Jacks. But if this all sounds totally friggin' awesome to you, visit Union Jacks in Annapolis, just across from Whole Foods in the Annapolis Town Center. Union Jacks, not your old-style pub. And we're back, and we're all refreshed again at 49 West. We're here with Gavin Buckley, who is running for mayor of Annapolis. And we've got an election that will be coming up in November, which is another eight short months away. And before we left, I was going to ask Gavin one question. I said, if you won won the election and you have a $500 million budget, he just fell off his chair and said, $500 million? I thought it was $100 million. But I gave him a raise to $500 million. If he's got half a billion dollars to spend, so he's got a dream city at his feet. What is the, the dream city of Annapolis? for Mayor Buckley? Um, Well, uh, I think the first thing I would do, and it doesn't involve money, but um, um, I would try to to, um, strike a a peace deal with Eastport. I think that would be really important. You know, we'd have a... (laughs) Peace treaty? (laughs) We'd have a big... uh, We'd have a barge in the middle of the harbor and we'd sign it. Peace summit out in uh, Camp Wabana or something like that. Something (laughs) serious, you know. So so once we've um, made peace with Eastport, um, I think that uh, I love the idea of the boutique hotel uh, at the side of what is now the Yacht Club. The, the Yacht Club. So I think, you know, help facilitate that for Harvey or whatever we have to do because I think that we need some people um, living at City Dock to sort of create some energy around there. <laughs> Obviously, we would do all the stuff we have to do for the uh, rising tide. So, um, uh, and I've seen a few different plans for that, but I think that that's got to be the n- number one thing we that's do. That's for the flooding downtown. Yeah. That's... And then I think we have to look at the public housing that hasn't been rebuilt in 50 years. And so you have to, we'd have money to, to invest in that and, and, and rebuild it. I say the areas in public housing, we have problems. Uh, we have problems because the people that live there think no one cares about them because no one's spent any money in these things for a long, long time. If you uh, rebuild and redesign, I think we should redesign it with you know mixed income housing and, and different other different things that, that can 
give people hope and give people opportunity. Um, I like the idea of um, the convention centre, art centre at Park Place. I think that would be a great thing. We should fund that. We need the town needs a convention centre. My uh, big thing is going to be about you know connecting our bike paths and connecting our green spaces, connecting our neighbourhoods through bike paths and green spaces. So I'd put a lot of money into that stuff. You're running out of money. Here. <laughs> okay, you're, you're, you're at four hundred million six hundred and twelve thousand. So. I have a big Ferris wheel. Uh, oh, that's my yeah, but yeah. What about the yeah? What, what about the Annapolis Eye hanging down there? Oh, the right. right. So you see all the way over to see all the way over to Ken Island. That was there. my big announcement. Oh, damn it! Stole your thunder. Stole your thunder. Winds stole around your the sails. Uh, but going back a little bit more into into reality, you do have a hundred million dollars. You don't have five hundred million if you're successful and running for your mayor. Ten, you said, right? Um, yeah, about somewhere in there. Well, don't 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 shortchange him. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have times 100, are tough. You have one hundred eight, one hundred ten dollars. One hundred eight, one hundred ten thousand. Yeah. You know, if I have one hundred million dollars, what thousand? One hundred eight hundred doesn't matter to me. It's all the same. But you alluded to a big announcement. Throw it well, out there. Well, it was just a bit of a joke because um, I think that we're not doing enough to get families downtown, and so we have to think of different ideas that get families back into our town centre. And so um, we can't just be bars and restaurants and things like that. So I, I've had articles um, published that talk about... Um, a spray park at City Dock, you know, something like you see in uh, other cities around the country. A just spray? Spray park. So little, water, uh, like a water fountain. Uh, fountains that just shoot ca- up out of the It comes water? out of the ground, so it's not a, a, oh, yeah, a sculpture. They, they had those in Chicago. Yeah. They had the big one in Chicago. They're, they're awesome. flat, so they're, they're not sculptures, so they don't, they don't impede the boat show or anything like that, but they're just flat spray parks. And then you run across them, and Under what's them. great about these is they're great in the summer, obviously, but what's they're great because... Everyone can use them. You know, you can be a rich kid or a poor kid. You know, it's just uh, uh, something that gets um, and something to, for you to do with your grandkids or your kids when they're, they're down at City Dock. My, um, uh, you know, I think obviously in the winter we should be pushing for an ice ring and a holiday market and things that get people down to the dock. But my big huh. announcement, uh, w- which is not so big anymore, is um, <laughs> imagine a Ferris wheel. Uh, downtown. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just bust. And, um, <laughs> I and, said Ferris wheel. And, uh, and, I've call, and the name for the Ferris wheel is called um, I on Annapolis. Oh, you're so. F- <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All, right. All right, kissing ass will get no, get, get you get you nowhere on this one. <laughs> oh, I could change the name if you don't like that name. <laughs> yeah. But I think that well, imagine how great it would be. So we could run it as a concession. It could be there just on a two-year lease. You could. Uh, people would go on this Ferris wheel. Um, it, they could go up. They could see the Bay Bridge. They could see Eastport. They could see West Annapolis. They could make an informed decision about where to go around the town. And I think that it wouldn't take away from our town. It doesn't take away from London. The London Eye doesn't take away from London. The Paris one doesn't take how away is, from the city. How is the one performing down at National Harbor? Do we know? I know they had one. Huh? I didn't know they had yeah, one. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, yeah, and again, same thing. It's it's on National Harbor in PG County, and, right. and you go up and you, it's beautiful at night. From I've seen pictures. You see all the DC and all the monuments and everything all lit up from across. See, so put that at Susan C. Campbell Park. Yeah, yes. and so uh, and on a two year lease. And then you're talking about the water, the spray park. No, I don't want to say water park, but the spray park, like you yeah. have in Chicago and, and uh, Philadelphia, kind of Pittsburgh, Susan, have some Susan great B. Ones. Campbell Park. You know, I, I would like to uh, cut the deal with the Annapolis Elementary School so that we gain some parking on that side of town. And then I would like to use a couple of lanes of parking to create a green space at okay, the dock I, as well. You know, I guarantee so, you yeah. that Senator Astle and Mike Panellini's do not have ferris wheel anywhere in their campaign on their <laughs> <laughs> or spray park but what about a zip line but that said <laughs> why not but that said actually yeah. the, like, the, the, when you said ferris wheel i just nodded dutifully yeah. but actually the more i think about it yeah. these are these if you think about susan c campbell park the end of As city dock destination you don't need you, need, you walk you need down you look 50, at the boats and walk 50 back by 20 um to, uh, as an area for it so you don't need a huge it could be in one lane of parking it could be on susan b campbell park there is a lot of room but the m- main idea is things for people to do when they get downtown what do we do when we get downtown you know we have some of the historic sites which are beautiful and, and there but sometimes they're not great for kids because your kids knock things over you know I know that um, well and then we have um, you know we have limited access I think to the water I mean uh, good, the ferries are good but I think that that doesn't really that's a good point we, we don't yeah. really have a whole lot of like yeah. in Annapolis we don't have crab houses and we don't have a lot of access to the water yeah, we you have you can't get a, a kayak from City Dock you can't huh. uh, that was one of the, the yeah. one of the 
featurettes that they had a couple of years ago. That was one of the things that kept coming on. They're, the main things were Debbie Gosselin putting sticky notes on saying, don't screw with the boat show and the kayak access. And they were talking at the bottom of like uh, Green Street or Newman Street to somehow have some sort of a kayak access. Uh, I mean, it is, as, as off the wall as that sounds. Um, Actually, I'm warming up to this. <laughs> it's, 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 it sounds very cool. And when you threw out a two-year lease, that's, I mean, how can you almost not say no if you can figure a way to fund it? Because it's it's, it's a test, if you will. Yeah, all the ideas I have, like, they're, 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 I've ways, I think I have ways to fund them. And they run as concessions, so they're not more city employees. You know, it's a business. You created a business for someone, and they work either on tips or they work on, you know, Toll, and the city, the city, like city would own it and yeah. perhaps lease well, it out you, to an you, operator. You could lease it and then sublease it, you know, yeah. to so, an operator. Um, and, and then if it worked, you know, you could purchase your own, you know. But I've, there's a great model of one in Fremantle, where I'm from in Australia, which is is a great one, you know. I have another idea. It's um, well, keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um, uh, Crosstown Flyer and the uh, the other. The Crosstown Flyer and the East-West Flyer. Yeah, you had mentioned um, that earlier in the program. So w- that w- the one that uh, g- gets you up and down at, around town in these free open-air trolleys. And they're run as concessions too. So we get federal funds, federal transportation funds to buy the vehicles. And then we re- let someone run it as a business. Now, are these like so, the big golf cart thingies that we're talking um, about? They're like, uh, no, a bit bigger like you see at the Baltimore um, Zoo. But like an electric version of that would be the ideal about. one. Like the Bal- people movers. A little articulated thing where you can get three or four people in a row but it's only one lane wide and you have to you have to give them dedicated lanes so they're efficient so we we, it's hard to make our uh, public transport efficient around town because of traffic and that so you have to make dedicated trolley lanes that are dedicated bike lanes as well i'm very big into getting people around town on bikes and and easy free transport so i'm I'm now starting to think because i'm if i'm listening to your platform and a lot of them they're they're a big idea based i mean they're they're off the wall kind of thinking i hate the term outside the box but that's where we've ended up i'm thinking in terms of it's not just pro business but it's it's obviously making us a destination center that's not based on what we have already because we always i mean we're we're a uh colonial city uh we're you know the sailing capital and all those things are fine well and good but nothing's new we've been that for you know 50 years and we have the tourism we we do now how do you expand upon that so i I really do like the concepts of making giving us reasons for people to come out Uh, and when you said it just now i was thinking about you said something about christmas we've confined ourselves in the city when it comes to tourism and to the locals for the most well tourism is this town's for tourists in late spring summer early fall and then they disappear and everyone and all the businesses say where are the locals and the locals don't come down but i'm thinking like in germany they have the uh, christmas fair which which is like in Nuremberg or Hamburg or somewhere oh, like, sure. like that. Yep. And it's massive. People yep. fly in for that. Can you utilize off-season times here to do – I'm not saying we do that, but can you can you say, look, we're, we, here's some ideas that, that are great, but they're during the peak t- tourist time when people are coming anyway. Are there times where we have room that the, the, the businesses are hurting? I mean, uh, the, the ice cream place, exactly, uh, yeah. Storm I Brothers mean, is closed for months right now. All those spaces at City Dock are empty all winter long. You know, they might get a little bit busy on uh, during the winter weekend. But rarely can you not find a, a spot at City Dock during I, the know, winter. No. Parking is such a misnomer because I have, with the exception of a, like Fourth of July boat show, red herring is what you say. Uh, not misnomer. Yeah, I, I mean I've never had a real problem finding. I mean I got to look. I mean it's not like it's going to be in front of. Oh, I want to go to Tsunami and uh, Presto. There's a spot there, but I've never had a problem. People getting. want easy parking, and I like here it is, 102 degrees in February, and I and everyone's outside, and I found street parking without looking too hard. You can find parking. I think it's a, I agree with you. You've brought me to your side. It's not a misnomer. It's a false, it's a red herring, but it's... Yeah, you've just got to, you've just got to look for but it. But I, I think, think but so... My, my trolleys would get people out of their cars at the top of Main Street, not at the bottom of Main Street. So if you could, we have three empty garages that sit empty all, all night long, seven nights a week and all weekend long. We need people, we need to get tourists into those garages and then leave the other garages for locals where we know where to park or the other spots for locals where we know to park. Well, you look at, at the things that you mentioned about off off season to help out. I mean, we, and, and it, it's evolving there. You look, a perfect example would be you kick off with a light parade in the middle of December, morph it right into the, the grand illumination for West Street. Then you've got Midnight Madnesses that fall in thing. Right now, as we're recording this, we're in the middle of restaurant week. Um, so there's a lot of places that will do things to, um, you know, make it work. 
Yeah. So that's a hey, smile for Tim. He's taking a picture. Hey. Cheese. <laughs> we need an Instagram account. Um, no, we don't. No, we don't. You know that Ferris wheel? I thought you were, you know, A, I thought I was joking, and B, then I thought you were joking, and then now I'm sitting there thinking, wow, okay. Maybe I on Annapolis was prescient, you know, from back in 2009 when, when I started that. And bringing families down there, and, and just somewhat of a related but a little bit off the piano down at right. uh, the market house that's brilliant and that was brought it, in by Ellie Tierney who's running for Ward 1 and I lifted it there can I tell you yes, I'm yeah, a team yeah. player I lifted it from the donation house all the way to downtown oh, so now if there's a piano tuner listening um, like uh, Phil, <laughs> Phil Gerlich if there's anyone who wants to do the city of solid it could use a little bit of a tune but other than that I play it every time I'm down there public works yeah. work to get it out there and everything else and there's yeah. volunteers I'm presuming that they cover it in the rain we need more quirky things like that we really do yeah. which is which is things. very cool. And actually, I saw a post today from Ellie Tierney, and she's got a little bit of an issue because there's a homeless guy that's very good at playing it that has now pretty much taken residence there with a tip bucket. <laughs> and you know, and, and you know and, what though? And it's it's a hard it's a hard Organic. position to be in. Is he good? Is he good at it? Yeah. You rock it. Then then let him go. You know, we, he basically he's working for free with no benefits to provide us with some ambience oh. downtown. Let him go. You know, I saw Martin O'Malley playing guitar with his guitar open there. <laughs> really? He's, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually oh, I took awesome. a picture of him busking uh, oh, late, in, late in his term, and a whole bunch of newspapers. I was going to say something tonight, but we want to get him on the podcast. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Hey, and real briefly, let's just talk about your competition. You're running against an establishment candidate in the primary at this point, uh, even though he's not technically filed yet. Senator. And yeah. you've got a Republican mayor, which is sort of an anomaly in the office in Annapolis. So what, what do you think about your competition I mean, or I their think, competition, I guess? I don't know how that... <laughs> I mean, I, I like being the underdog, you know. I um, think it's great to, to be in that position, which is good for me. I'm not going to... I'm going to have half the money those guys have, but I'm not going to run a campaign that's about that. It's going to be a grassroots campaign. And but if I history has shown anything recently is that the outsider candidate <laughs> actually does pretty well. <laughs> but I think that for John, you know, it's a great contrast for me because he's been in the game for a long time and he, he's, he's done a great job, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm about new ideas, you know, so... John will be a good man if you want more of the same, I'd say. And then I'll be a good guy if you want some new new ideas. For Mike... and He, he was the guy... He was the change agent last time. Yeah. And well, just by, Mike, just by Providence, you yeah. know, because he was, yeah. he was Republican, you know, he's going to sweep... His, his right. slogan was, I'm going to sweep the out clean. Right. And I think for Mike, he's got an Obama problem. So you can tell people that it's better um, as many times as you like. And But but if they don't feel like that, if, the, if it doesn't feel any different different downtown if it's not any faster to get a permit then you can tell people it's good as much as you want but if it doesn't feel that way they're not going to believe you you know and i think that's what happened in this last election well it's perception you know that's what i mean it's it's it's, we talked about that with eastport residents is that you can tell them that crime is going down all you want but when the bullets are flying flying, flying, right yeah and and so you can have mayor panelitti say well you know i'm streamlining this program process but if you're a business owner and you're trying to, to open your doors and you're blazing through money, then, you know, the perception, it doesn't matter if it's a week or two weeks uh, shorter process because you're still going through your capital. So, I mean, I get it. Yeah. Interesting perspective. What, what else What else have we run on? I mean, we're running on, on, on fam- business-friendly, family. Yep. Business-friendly, family-friendly, and local-friendly. And, and I'm not running against Mike. I like Mike, you know. I, I'm no, not you running are. Against yeah, no, you guys are going to have to, you have to share <laughs> the I'm office just then. running it's, it's, the run. I'm, I'm, I'm not running against John. John's a good man. He's been a great public servant. I'm just running for some new ideas. And I'm running because, you know, my kids go to school downtown. I actually run downtown. I'm at City Dock three mornings a week. I, um, I, I, know, I have businesses downtown. I have real estate downtown. I, I just want to call a city. And 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 there's some people don't want us to involve, and I think some people kind of fight against change. And are, I don't think they really love the city as much as I do. <laughs> so, so um, I'm that's your I'm, logo. <laughs> I'm not trying to get another. I'm not trying to get a job. I don't need a job. I'm not. I don't have another political ambition after this. I just think that um, we have a great city, and there's a lot more we could do with it if someone just connected the dots. Well, wow, that's awesome. So. Uh, you're going to have the website up soon. You're going to have the Twitter up pretty soon. You've got, you're just telling off mic that you've got your campaign manager has yeah. got all those things. Uh, Gavin kind of for Annapolis is your Facebook page. Correct? Is it? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you on Facebook? You're, you're not a social media guy, are you? No, not. I don't do Facebook. That's why I really haven't gone there because I needed someone to do it for me because I wouldn't have done it justice. So Good for you. Scott, Scott's managing the Facebook right now, and then we should have the website up in the next few days. So My brother just quits uh, Facebook a couple days ago, and he goes on and on about it like an ex drinker. You just see, like he just actually the fa- the, your Facebook page, Gavin, <laughs> is Gavin Buckley for Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can search that on Facebook, and uh, it has a lot about his platform. It'll have some more information there. The website is getting ready to launch soon, you said. Yes. Um, and they will get on to the whole Twitter thing. I mean, he's uh, got 627 people liking it and another 650 people following it. So that means that must be the mayor's friends that are following it. And if you're following him there, you can follow us at the Maryland Crabs on Facebook. We have a page and we have a group. Both uh, We post uh, the uh, shows to both of those so you know what's coming up. You can find us at MD Crabs Podcast on Twitter. John is I in Annapolis on Twitter. I'm Tim Hamilton 47 on Twitter. You can find John and I both on Facebook, and we'll friend anybody pretty much. Yep. Uh, we are on iTunes and Google Play, where you want to subscribe and you want to give us a, the most star rating you possibly can, and a swell review would be awesome. Find us at info at Maryland Crabs at the Maryland Crabs dot com or at the Maryland Crabs dot com, and we are everywhere. That's it. And again, thank you to Brian Callahan for the space at 49 West. I'll say thank you to Gavin, man. You've got some really kick-ass restaurants. I mean, I, you yeah. know, uh, Metropolitan is one of my favorites. And I've, uh, I know on R&R, we've been talking a lot about the uh, restaurant week. And I'm like, I know we gave a couple gift cards out for that. This, you know, this morning it was like, you know, the lamb burger. We're like, don't, <laughs> don't take that off, man. I'll be pissed. Uh, the lamb burger is really awesome. Yeah, lemongrass, that's our favorite. I, I drive here with a, with one of those insulated bags when I get to go. Oh, um, nice. But you've, you've really done a, a good job changing up what we have. You are a, certainly a change agent. You know, I imagine murals will be a little bit more prevalent under Gavin. <laughs> I look forward to the cable car uh, along Main Street. That's going to be great. <laughs> um, some the great ideas. shot across the harbor. <laughs> all, all, all about family, all about locals, and bringing them back down to Annapolis and bringing, reinventing it. Thank you. Last things? Anything? No, no, this has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've got lots more ideas, but I, I, I had to shut up. I want to, Next <laughs> month. If you're parcel or not, I want to get you drunk and get some of these ideas. <laughs> so in the meantime, we're going to have some more candidates coming on, and uh, we're going to have some of our online debates that are going to be coming up, but we're still making plans for that. So stay tuned uh, to Facebook and our webpage for all that. And I think we're going to be starting an uh, email blast pretty soon, um, so we'll be able to get that out to everyone. So, Gavin, again, thanks for coming on, and we're going to have you on again soon. This is always fun. Thank you so much for having me. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.